Another fairy tale that I think is very clearly uh, descended from ancient myth is that of uh, Sleeping Beauty. In Sleeping Beauty, of course, uh, pricked her finger on a spindle, and if you don't know what a spindle is, a spindle is uh, what you wrap the, uh, uh, the yarn around when you are spinning, and so that is associated with uh, a woman's occupation, uh, pins and needles, and also with the fates. Let's keep that in mind. But that's not the reason why I think that it is descended from another ancient myth. And that, uh, you know, the spinning, yes, that motif uh, uh, continues into fairy tales and, you know, um, uh, Rumpelstiltskin, etc., etc. But Sleeping Beauty has another um, archetypal association with uh, myth. And that goes back to Eris. And I've not talked about Eris before, but Eris is the goddess of discord. She is Ares' sister. And she was very much disliked by the ancient Greeks, as was Ares. Now you see Ares and Ares both in uh, a modern uh, myth, which is that of Xena, which is no longer uh, playing on TV, of course. But if you ever watched that, you would see representations of both of those characters. But Ares is the goddess of discord, and again, is, is disliked. And she would ride with Ares in his war chariot, and she would, you know, send out, uh, uh, you know, bad vibes to all the people below. She was not well liked, either by humans or by the gods. And so when uh, Peleus and Thetis uh, had their wedding, guess who they didn't invite? Yet they didn't invite cousin Ares. And uh, uh, as it were, she caught wind of the wedding, and she went anyway. And when she got there, she came in and she had a golden apple. And she threw the apple down on the floor at the feet of uh, uh, the deities, and she said, uh, you know, to this, uh, uh, you know, here's a prize. And so when they picked it up, it said, to the fairest which meant that the most beautiful among the Olympian goddesses could possess this golden apple. And you understand it wasn't only the fact that the apple was golden, but it was the title of being most beautiful. And so you had three main runners. You had Hera, Aphrodite, and Athena, who were all vying to uh, get the title of the most fair and to get this golden apple. And uh, uh, if you, you know, are familiar with the story of the Trojan War, and I don't, I don't teach the Trojan War in this. Uh, you know, I talk about the characters instead of, in some of the circumstances. But I think that's more aptly taught in a Greek myth class. But at any rate, if you are familiar with the story of the Trojan War, that's how it got started. Because they picked Paris, who Priam had sent away from Troy... Uh, because he was supposed to bring the downfall, they picked Paris, the shepherd boy, to, who was really, a, a, of course, a prince in disguise, to choose who the fairest was, and he picked Aphrodite because he, she promised him the most beautiful woman in the world, who was Helen. But that's a digression. The point that I wanted to uh, show here is Eris crashing the party. And how is that related to Sleeping Beauty? Because when Sleeping Beauty is born, her parents have a big christening party. And everybody in the kingdom is invited, invited except for, you got it, the bad fairy. Now in the Disney movie, she's called, she's called Maleficent, which just, just means evil. But I don't think she's ever named in uh, the fairy tales. So they have this big party. The bad fairy is not invited. All of the good fairies are. The fairy godmothers are invited. And uh, the bad fairy hears anyway. She crashes the party and she bestows a gift. But the gift is a prophecy or a promise or a threat that when uh, the young princess reaches a certain age, she will prick her finger on a spindle and she will fall into, uh, she will die. Now, this also, uh, this, this fairy tale also um, correlates with the idea of fate. Because Sleeping Beauty's parents try to circumvent her fate by getting rid of all of the spinning wheels and all of the spindles in the country. Which would have really have caused havoc in, in that country because of, uh, uh, you know, the, there would be no fabric. You know, what would you be doing? And... 
the one thing that saves Sleeping Beauty is that one of the uh, uh, fairy godmothers had withheld her gift to the child, and the gift became that she would not die, but she would sleep for a hundred years or until the prince came along and woke her up. And we all know how that story ended. Uh, of course, um, in the original story, it was either in Snow White or Sleeping Beauty, when one of those two young women woke up, uh, she was pregnant with twins because Prince Charming wasn't so pregnant, wasn't so pregnant, wasn't so charming. So you have this idea of uh, the evil person not being invited comes anyway and wreaks havoc which I think, again, is related back to um, myth. It's all about myth. 